Hey there everyone, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 X. This is Microsoft's new version of Windows 10 designed primarily for dual screen and foldable PCs that's built on a new modern core that strips out legacy components in favour of a lightweight and streamlined user experience. This is a pretty big deal, it's essentially the future of Windows and pretty much every legacy component that was once part of Windows 10 has been removed and containerized, and that means the entire user experience inclu including the Windows shell uh, has been updated with modern code. So you shouldn't be running into any legacy UIs anymore. Everything on this version of Windows is entirely modern, uh, which is great for those who are interested in consistent user interfaces and all of that good stuff. Now, that doesn't mean Win32 programs don't work, because they do. We'll get to that in a little while though. For now, let's sort of take a look at the Windows shell and the overall user experience, because that's where the exciting stuff really is right now on Windows 10X. So right now we're using Windows 10X on a dual screen device. This is an emulator which emulates dual screens and Windows can see that and has decided to split the UI into two here. So along the bottom we have this sort of white bar. This is our taskbar, but when we're using it in tablet mode, I guess, uh, the taskbar minimizes because you don't really need to see it all the time. Uh, you can swipe up on it. So if I swipe up on it here, that will uh, show us the start button as well as our pinned apps and our task view button. If I tap on the start button here, that will open up the new start menu. So yes, Windows 10X features a brand new start menu. In fact, everything on Windows 10X regarding the shell is pretty much brand new. So um, we can see here our start menu is the combination of three different things that were already available on Windows 10. The search UI, the apps list, and our timeline activity. On Windows 10, those are three different UIs for some reason, but on Windows 10X, they've all been placed into the same start menu UI here. So at the top, we have our search bar. If I tap on that, I can start searching. So if I want to launch, say, a calculator, I can just type calculator here, and that will show up there. Below that is our apps list, and that also includes web apps. So if you pin apps through Microsoft Edge, they will show up in this apps list as well. We can tap on show all here to show us all of our installed apps, which is pretty nice. And again, below that, we have our timeline activity. So this will update with recent documents and websites that you've visited uh, and allow you quick access to those things without having to dive through the file explorer or go into the corresponding app specifically. So that's a quick look at the start menu. Uh, there is a microphone up here, but it doesn't seem to do anything right now. Uh, you'll likely be able to search for voice in a future build. So the start menu is a super simple launcher pretty much, um, and that's by design. Live tiles are gone here, um, and I think that's a good thing for Windows 10X. I much prefer this clean UI, especially with the colorful icons, which most of the apps will be getting on Windows 10X. Uh, in addition to the start menu, Microsoft has also updated the action center as well. So if we come over to the right screen here and swipe up on it, then tap on the system tray, that will launch the new action center. Now on Windows 10X, the action center has been visually separated. We have our quick actions now called quick settings below, as well as our notifications in a separate box. Uh, if we dive into the quick settings first, if we maximize this here, you'll see that this entire UI has been redesigned on Windows 10X and it's much more useful as well now. For example, uh, some of these settings here can be dealt with within the quick settings panel. No longer will I be taken to the settings app to customize specific Bluetooth settings or input language settings. So for example, if I come down to ease of access here and tap on the arrow, I can actually turn on and off ease of access settings straight through this panel rather than being taken into settings to do so. Same goes for Bluetooth. If I had a bunch of Bluetooth devices connected here, I could connect to them straight through this UI. This is a much better and much more streamlined experience compared to Windows 10, which is, in my opinion, a little clunky right now. Along the top here, we have our volume control, and we can also change our audio devices through here as well. Uh, and if we actually have music playing, let's launch, uh, let's say, let's launch Groove Music real quick. If we launch Groove Music um, and start playing a song here, Play. Turn you down. Uh, if we go back to the action center here, you'll see that we now have a music control UI within the action center as well. Also visually separated from the quick settings and notifications. So that's a quick look at the new action center. Like I said, a much better experience in my opinion compared to Windows 10. And this is something I really hope shows up on desktop at some point because it's just a, an improvement overall compared to what's in Windows 10 today. There's also a new shutdown UI. If I quickly tap on the shutdown button here, that's what it looks like. I won't shut down though, because there's nothing really new past this UI. There's also a new lock screen UI, as you can see here, except it doesn't really work in this build, so there's not much to show off right now. 
So that's sort of the brand new shell experiences. Let's get to manipulating windows via dual screens. So as you can see here, we have our pinned apps on the taskbar. If I open up the mail app, for example, on the left display, that will open on the left screen. And if I swipe up the taskbar on the right display, I can open up another app and that will open on the right screen as you would expect. But some apps support something called spanning, which means taking advantage of both screens with one app. The mail app is a great example of this. So if I minimize file explorer here for a second. So if I want this app to take advantage of both displays, all I have to do is grab it via the title bar, dock it to the center bezel, let go, and the app will span across both displays. So now if I tap into my email again, I should see that email on the right screen while still being able to see my email inbox and folder list on the left screen. So that's just one example of how using a dual screen device with Windows 10X allows you to be more productive using two screens. You can see more at the same time with two screens, but that's not the only reason why you'd want to use two screens, of course. You may want to multitask. So if we dock the mail app back on this left screen here and open up an app on the right screen, let's open up the calendar app, for example. I can now do my email and arrange events at the same time, which is a common task on Windows PCs. So while we're here with the calendar app open, if we swipe up on the taskbar here, you may notice that the calendar icon is visually separated from the pinned icons on our taskbar. And that's a new change on Windows 10X. Pinned icons are grouped separately from running apps. So if we open up another app here that isn't pinned to our taskbar, like the settings app, for example, you'll see that will be grouped on the right side and our pinned apps operates on the left side. Uh, so if we quickly minimize these two apps here, um, this is the default behavior of the taskbar on Windows 10 X. We have our pinned apps on the left, we have our running apps on the right, and all of our programs, whether they're pinned or running, operate between the start button and task queue. Uh, the entire sort of collection of buttons on the taskbar are centered. However, this might be something that users can change in the future. In this build, there's a sort of hidden debug menu for the taskbar here, which allows access to a bunch of different taskbar settings. So by default, the taskbar is set to centered, as well as having the task view button to the far right. We can change that though. If we want to have the taskbar docked to the left, like on Windows 10, and have the task view button right next to the start button, we can actually enable that as well. So if we open up the taskbar here now, you'll see that Yep, the start button and task view buttons are on, docked on the far left and all of our icons are sitting left rather than centered. There's also a couple of other things here such as uh, the ability to turn on and off active state indicators, uh, the divider after pinned apps, and we can also turn off show running apps entirely, uh, which is pretty nice. Now, like I said, I don't think this UI specifically will be here in the final products. Uh, some of this might show up in the actual settings app at some point, but not via this way. Uh, there's also two sort of um, preset versions of the taskbar here. Sigma is the default one. Orange is the one that's a little more like Windows 10. So download the emulator, try out the different taskbar settings for yourself and uh, test out which one you think is better suited for you. Uh, real quick, I just wanna show off the new uh, notification sound here. There is a new sound in Windows 10X. Uh, in fact, there's quite a few new sounds that sort of appear here and there depending on what you're doing. Uh, but this is the notification sound here. We just do a basic one. We're going to preview and pop that toast. That's the new sound you're going to hear when notifications come in on Windows 10X. And I think it's actually quite nice. We can dismiss that. Uh, if we open up the action center again, we can see that in our notifications now. We can expand that and we can clear all if we really want to. Pretty nice indeed. So you may have noticed in the action center here, there's a quick action called compose mode. Now what this does is turn Windows 10X from being a touch first tablet friendly UI into something that's a little more mouse and keyboard centric. Uh, so if we tap on the compose mode here, you'll see a few things happen. The UI will change orientation and our second screen will become a virtual keyboard and trackpad. This is important because on devices with dual screens, that second screen is all you've got for keyboard and trackpad functionality. Now on some devices, you will have an actual accessory that you can lay on top of the second screen to type. Uh, but if you don't have that with you, you will have to use a virtual keyboard here. Now, give me a second to uh, adjust the UI for you so you can see things a little better. So here we are. Now, a few things have changed on the top here. If we take a look at the taskbar, the taskbar is no longer minimized by default. All of our pinned apps and icons are just showing by default, just like on Windows 10. And that's because we're using a mouse and keyboard as our primary input device now. Uh, so if we look at the bottom screen here real quick, the top area here is for the virtual touchpad. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm actually using this to manipulate the cursor here. And below that, of course, is our virtual keyboard. If we come down to the uh, start button here and tap on something, in fact, if we go into the mail app and create a new email, 
we can use the virtual keyboard here to type it out. Hello, there, this is an email. There we go. Now there's also something called the wonder bar on this second screen. If we tap on this little sort of square love heart button here, that will open up our emojis as well as GIFs. So we can now insert GIFs into text fields here. So let's insert, say, this cat GIF. Give it a second to drop in. And there it is in our email. We can, of course, also add emoji here. So if we tap on this again, we can go to our full emoji UI and select on a number of stuff here. Let's set the cool guy with glasses. And then we can send that email off and that works as you would expect. Now this wonder bar is a little bit smart as well. If we minimize this here and go into Groove Music once again, uh, the trackpad will sort of shift over to the right here and we'll get a widget that shows up on the left to control our music. It's kind of like the touch bar on a Mac, except way more useful. So we can play music here, have that minimized. We can change the volume of it. We can also skip tracks and we can also change sides. So if you want to have the widget on the right and our touchpad on the left, we can do that as well. Uh, that's a super nice idea and app developers will be able to take advantage of this. For example, with Netflix, you can actually have your video play in one of these widget areas whilst doing something else on the bigger screen, if that's what you prefer. And that's just a really, really nice idea. So that's a quick look at the sort of virtual keyboard trackpad setup on Windows 10X. Now for the rest of this video, we're gonna punch in on the top screen because you don't really need to see what's going on down here. So here we are on the Windows 10X desktop and something I've just noticed, which is kind of nice, you can change your wallpaper straight via this area now. You don't have to jump into settings to do it. If you just right click on an empty space on the desktop here, you'll see that you can select a new wallpaper. We can select this one if we want and that will change our wallpaper, which is pretty nice. We can also add custom ones if I click on new here. That should load up our pictures folder and I can select images that I have downloaded manually. Let's select this one. And there we are. Now this wallpaper looks like it would go really well with a dark theme. Of course, Windows 10X supports dark mode and it looks kind of nice. So if we jump into settings here, go to personalization and go down to colors here, we can change our theme to dark and that will change the taskbar and the start menu to match the dark mode. There we go, that's what the start menu looks like in dark mode. Uh, Action Center doesn't have dark mode yet in this build, I'm sure that's coming later, but since it is pre-release software, that makes sense. But otherwise, this UI looks kind of fresh. Of course, apps support dark mode because they do on Windows 10, of course they do here as well, as you can see here, which is kind of nice. Uh, and now we're running, and now since we're running two apps, of course we can dock those side by side if we dock mail over here and settings on this side, we can run two apps at once on one screen. But you may have noticed you cannot run apps in cascading windows, and that's by design, according to Microsoft. Microsoft says that most Windows 10 devices are going to have small screens. The Surface Neo, for example, has a nine inch screen. There's two nine inch screens, but the actual single display is nine inches, which isn't that big. So does it make sense to run apps in Windows. On that device, probably not. Now, Microsoft is open to feedback here. If enough people suggest that actually we would like to be able to run apps in Windows regardless of screen size, I'm sure they will change it. But by default in this build anyway, apps aren't able to run in windowed mode. They only run in full screen or snapped side by side, kind of like Windows 8. Microsoft did tell us that this might change on devices with larger screens. Say if you have a 13 inch foldable, for example, it may make more sense to be able to run apps in Windows there. But on, the, on a device with the nine inch screen or two nine inch screens, they reckon it doesn't make any sense. But again, they're open to feedback and uh, they will likely change it if enough people say that they think running apps in Windows on any screen size is important. Now you may have noticed that there is a new file explorer icon. In fact, there is a new file explorer app. Well, I say new, it isn't really new, but it is default on Windows 10X. This is the file explorer that Windows 10 Mobile and Surface Hub and HoloLens has. Um, it's now on Windows 10X and it is the default file explorer experience. Um, it's very, very bare bones in this build. I would hope that Microsoft has some plans for this uh, file explorer because right now it's basically unusable. There needs to be an entirely new UI and more features and everything before this is considered good enough to be the default file explorer experience on Windows 10X. So hopefully we'll see something come down the line, but in this build that unfortunately isn't present. 
Now, Windows 10X puts web apps front and center uh, with its experience. As I mentioned in the start menu here, the apps list doesn't just mention apps, it mentions websites as well. So this is the Office web app here, and as you can see, it looks kind of like a native app, and that's the whole point. On Windows 10X, web apps are treated as first-class citizens. So they operate alongside your UWP apps, like OneNote here, which runs quite nicely, or the Mail app. The Mail app is another UWP app, for example, and that runs pretty well. But then you've also got Win32 programs, and they also run on Windows 10X, even though those legacy components are no longer part of the host OS, the host OS being Windows 10X. So Win32 programs, legacy programs on Windows 10X operate a little bit differently compared to Windows 10. If we come and launch Notepad here, what you'll notice is it runs just like you would expect. But a lot is happening behind the scenes to make this happen. On Windows 10X, when you launch a Win32 program, Microsoft spins up something called Container OS, which is a containerized version of legacy Windows 10. A stripped down version of Windows 10, might I add, but it includes all of the legacy components required to run a Win32 program. So when I clicked on Notepad there, it loaded up the Container OS and placed Notepad on the host desktop, the modern Windows 10X desktop, that is. I can also create a text document here, test, and I can save that into my documents folder on Windows 10X because this is still the same PC after all. We go down to documents here. I can save this as test. Press on save and there you go. Now you may have noticed that was a legacy UI and that's because this app is operating within legacy Windows 10. You just can't see the legacy Windows 10 because like I said, it's been stripped back and only the components required to run Win32 programs are there. You cannot access things like the legacy start menu or the legacy shell experience. That's not a thing that you can do. This is simply just for running Win32 programs on top of Windows 10X. So let's minimize that and quickly open File Explorer to show you that that did save into my documents area and there we go there is our test document that we just created in notepad now of course since this is windows 10 we can install any program we really want there are some exceptions of course any program that tries to manipulate hard drives or partition hard drives will not work and also any programs that try to manipulate system or os data files will not work either but um any normal program should work just fine so if we try and download 7-zip here that will save into our downloads folder. I can click on this here, open file, and that will allow me to install 7-zip on top of Windows 10X. Of course, it is loading up those legacy components in the background to do so, but that doesn't mean anything. We can still run it and it will work just fine. Now, give it a second and it should show up in our apps list down here. There we go, there's 7-zip help. And here comes 7-zip itself. There we go, I can click on that. And now I'm running 7-Zip on top of Windows 10X, which is super nice indeed. Now, regarding the Win32 support, Microsoft Edge and I believe Microsoft's own Office applications, the full versions of Office, are an exception here. These apps, although they are Win32 programs, will not load up legacy components uh, for reasons that are very complicated and other stuff. Uh, they operate in a shim, basically. So Microsoft has done a lot of work behind the scenes to make the Win32 program talk to Windows 10X as if it were a native app. Um, I do not believe third-party apps can do this. I think it's only Microsoft's uh, first-party apps that can. Uh, but that's something to take note of. So when you're running Microsoft Edge here, you aren't actually loading up those legacy components in the background. It's behaving on Windows 10X as if it was a native app, which means you should be okay when it comes to performance and battery life. Now, if you want to move an app across displays, you can do that quite easily just by dragging from the top here and then moving it across displays and then letting go and then it will dock on the other side. You can also do that via the taskbar. If we swipe up the taskbar on the left side, for example, uh, and tap on the icon, that will just switch it over to the other display, just like you would expect, which is kind of nice. So there you have it, everybody. That's a quick look at, well, I say quick, that's a first look at Windows 10X. Uh, this is once again a pre-release build, so this isn't final. I'm sure many of these apps will be updated to take better advantage of Windows 10X and dual screens in the future. Uh, but for now, that's a early look at Windows 10X, I guess. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.